What's up guys, today I'm gonna to be using older makeup from my collection that was inspired by new makeup releases that I've seen all over Instagram lately. I know a lot of you are makeup lovers like I am and it can be very overwhelming to just see all of these new releases coming out all the time. It can be really tempting to just wanna buy it all. So this video is kind of my way of talking myself and maybe you guys out of buying new makeup, but I just wanna add that there's nothing wrong with buying new makeup as well. If you're interested in something, by all means go and buy it. So please don't take this as I'm bashing new makeup. I'm just really trying to limit my consumption right now and it's more of a personal decision. So also if you're new here, hi, my name is Jen and I talk about drugstore makeup and affordable makeup a lot on this channel as well as just saving money on beauty products in general. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and let us know down in the comments if you do subscribe and I'll be sure to go over and say hi. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So let's go ahead and start with primer first and I saw these over on Instagram these are the MAC Strobe Dewy Skin Tint. At first, I thought this was a tinted moisturizer, but when I saw the swatches, it actually kind of looks more like a glowy primer with just a touch of coverage. And it reminds me so much of the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I know this isn't an old product, it's relatively new, but it seems like such a similar product. The e.l.f. also comes in a ton of different shades and they have a little bit of coverage, but they also add a lot of glow to your skin. Another product I thought of is the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion, except those are just more like a liquid highlighter versus something like this that has a little bit more coverage. So I feel like this is probably the closest thing that I have in my collection to the new MAC product. So this is the shade Fair, and I've been using this so much on a pretty regular basis, at least several times a week. I love this subtle glow that it gives my skin. It's just enough to peek through foundation, especially if I'm not wearing something that's super full coverage. And it just makes my dry skin look a little bit healthier and glowier, especially now in the winter time when my skin is extra dry. I might still check out the MAC one at some point, but I figured I'll just wait a while and read reviews. And if people are really loving it or they feel like it's different than the e.l.f. one in some way, then I may pick it up eventually. But for now, I feel like I can cure my FOMO by just using this one. So I wanna let this primer set down for a couple minutes because I'm gonna be using a powder foundation. So let's jump over to eyes. So recently I've been seeing so many beautiful warm rosy palettes like the new one from Christian Dior that looks beautiful there's also a new one from Pat McGrath and I feel like a lot of people are kind of doing these Valentine's Day themed palettes this time of year and I definitely want these I think they're beautiful but I'm gonna give myself some time to just sort of think about it for a while I have a lot of these same tones in my collection and it actually made me think of my OG Valentine's Day type palette which is the modern Renaissance from Anastasia I got this back in 2016 when it first came out and this one is actually a backup that I just opened today because my original one is just kind of starting to dry out. It doesn't perform as well as it used to. And this at one point had gone 50% off. I think it was last year sometime. So I just grabbed it for a backup because this was one of my favorite palettes and I just wanted to have a fresh one. So I'm actually really excited to play with this again because I don't think I've done a look with the Modern Renaissance palette in several years. So I want to do something a little bit more Valentine's Day inspired. So I'm gonna start out with the shade Buon Fresco, which is this one right here. And this is a cool, dusty, kind of taupey lavender shade. It's really, really pretty, especially when most of the palette is more warm toned. I like that they added a couple of cool tones in here too. So I just put this in my crease and then I'm gonna take a fluffier brush. By the way, this is the BK Beauty 202 brush and I'm gonna use the 201, which is a little bit bigger to just blend out the edges. If you own the Modern Renaissance palette, let us know down in the comments and I'd love to know how long it's been since you used yours. Is it still something that you use regularly or have you been neglecting it like I have? Next, I'm gonna use the shade Love Letter right here and I'm gonna apply this with a small fluffy brush. This is the A502 from the Angie Hot and Flashy collection from BK Beauty. So I'm just gonna focus this on the outer corner of my eye, kind of in that outer V and I'm gonna shear this out quite a bit. I want it to look a little more pink and a little bit less red. So I'm just applying this in very small circles and I only picked up a little bit of product. Next, I'm picking up the shade Cypress Umber, which is a deep brown, and I'm just gonna deepen the outer corner using a pencil brush. 
and then I'm gonna blend that into that reddish shade. Next, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the NYX Glitter Primer, and I'm gonna pat this on my lid from the inner corner to about midway. I love using this primer even if I'm not using a glitter because not only does it help your shadows to grip really well, but also it'll help them to pop a little bit more. So I'm gonna pick up the shade Vermeer right here, and I'm gonna apply this to my lid from the inner corner to about the middle of my eye. And then taking that tiny crease brush, the A502, I'm just gonna blend where the two colors come together. It just helps make it a little bit more seamless. All right, then taking the pencil brush, I'm gonna go back into the love letter shade right here. And I'm just gonna put this on my lower lash line, going about halfway across. Next, I'm just gonna line my eyes using the Moira Micro Tip Liquid Liner. I love this one because it's so skinny, so if you have hooded eyes, you can make a really thin line without taking up too much lid space. Then for lashes, I'm gonna be using the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara. This is actually a new formula. I actually have a whole video just dedicated to this one, so if you're curious about that, I posted it a few weeks ago. It has kind of an interesting brush. You're supposed to use the flat side to like load the product on and then turn it to the side and use the little comb to just comb it through. But I think it makes my lashes huge. It gives so much length, so much volume, almost like a false lash effect. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just wanna show you really quickly what I'm looking at. So I'm facing out the windows in this room and the snow is coming down. It's so, so pretty. I know I used to film over by the window and a lot of you guys miss seeing that view. So I've just been watching it come down for the last 10 minutes or so and it's so pretty, I just wanted to share. So next up we have foundation and NARS has a new powder foundation out that looks really, really good. It's called the Soft Matte Perfecting Powder and it claims to blur imperfections, smooth the look of your skin and have medium coverage. And that immediately made me think of another powder that I have in my collection that I really, really love. And this is the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Instant Wrinkle Blurring Powder. So I actually did an entire video Video dedicated to this product. So I'll leave that along with the mascara one down in the description box in case you wanna check those out. But this is truly an amazing powder. I have mine in the shade Classic Ivory. And I should preface this by saying that I don't normally like powder. I have very dry skin. I'm 45 years old. So usually powder can look dry and really cakey on me, but somehow this one doesn't, especially if I apply it with the little puff that they include. It just smooths right on top of my skin and makes everything look completely flawless without looking dry or cakey or powdery. Like watch how it covers the redness on my nose. It's just so much coverage and it's so lightweight. It feels like nothing on your skin and it's not like a liquid that's gonna sink into pores or fine lines. It just kind of glides on top of everything and it just gives you such a flawless result. So while I'm sure the new NARS powder is really nice, I feel like not too many things can beat this one that I already have in my collection. I really just enjoy this so much that I feel like I don't really need any other powder foundations. Moving on, a lot of people are talking about the new Tarte Sculpt Tape Contour Wand, and I did end up purchasing this, but in case it's not in your budget, I just wanted to share an alternative. This is actually a concealer. It's the Revlon Color Stay Skin Awaken Concealer, but I just bought it in a deeper than my skin tone shade, so this is shade 75 Hazelnut, and it's so similar to the Tarte one. It has a little sponge tip applicator, and I feel like the color is very similar as well. It blends out beautifully beautifully on the skin. This is one of my favorite concealers. I actually have it in a lighter shade that I use under my eyes and it gives such a skin-like appearance. It's just really beautiful. So this is something that's really easy to get just at your local drugstore. You can even use the Age Rewind one from Maybelline that also has a sponge tip applicator. Just buy something that's a few shades darker than your natural skin tone. I'm kind of kicking myself for buying it now because I feel like this does the exact same thing. Flower Beauty also has a new contour wand as well. So that's an option and Milani has one as well, but I've had this one for months. I got this before the other drugstore ones came out. They're kind of like a trend now, but you really don't need to buy a specific contour product if you just get a concealer that's a little darker than your natural skin tone. It honestly works the exact same way. 
By the way, this little brush is the Buffing Foundation Brush from Profusion, and it is so perfect for this. I feel like it's a little bit small to use as a foundation brush. You could, but I love the smaller head on it because it's perfect for just like getting into the hollows of your cheeks and doing more precision work. So I use this a lot just for other cream products like cream blush or cream contour or bronzer. And it's a really inexpensive brush, but it does a great job. Next up for blush, I saw a new blush coming out from Danessa Myricks that looks amazing. It's called the Yummy Skin. Skin blurring Balm Blush. It's supposed to give a blurred, soft focus look to your skin, and it seems like it's going to be that balmy texture with a powdery finish, and instantly it reminded me of the J.Cat Blush Mellow blushes. I want to say these are like about $5 at Ulta, and these are technically a balm or cream formula, but when you touch them, they actually feel like a powder, and they have that same kind of blurring effect on your skin that just gives that really soft focus look. So it sounds very similar to what Danessa Myricks is coming out with. I have to say I'm still curious about those and I may try them out in store to see if they're similar to this, but by the description I feel like these are really kind of similar. So this is the shade Sweet and Chic and it's a beautiful hot pink, but when you put it on your skin it just kind of translates to more of a softer pink. It's not super bright unless you want to build it up a little bit more, but it has this beautiful soft soft focus effect that has a powdery dry down instantly so it's never going to feel sticky on your cheeks and it actually blends right on top of my powder foundation very easily. So I just love the effect that these give. They're just so soft and pretty. Another new product that I saw on Trend Moods page is from RMS Beauty and these are called the Lip Lights. So these look like cute little tinted lip balms in tubes and they definitely piqued my interest. She didn't have too much information about them, just a photo. So I haven't seen swatches or anything yet but just the name Lip Lights kind of makes me think that it's probably some sort of a tinted balm. But when I saw the packaging, they also kind of reminded me of the e.l.f. Rider Dye lip balms, and I love these so much, and they just sit in a drawer, and I hardly ever remember to use them. They're such a nourishing formula. They feel amazing on your lips. They're very thick and rich, and they sort of remind me of the Bite Beauty Agave lip mask, the original one that everybody loved. So this one is the cherry shade, and I thought it would go really well with the Modern Renaissance palette. It looks kind of dark coming out of the tube, but it's actually a pretty sheer cherry color. Oh my gosh, I forgot how much I love these. They feel so good. They have such a thick, cushiony feel. They just feel like a lip treatment. And this shade is so perfect. It's a sheer red, but it comes out almost like a Your Lips But Better color. It's very easy to wear. So I love it. And here is the finished result. I had so much fun playing with some of these products that I haven't picked up in a long time. With the exception of the e.l.f. Halo Glow and the Telescopic Lift Mascara, most of these products I really haven't tried in quite a while, especially the Modern Renaissance palette for this one. It's been years and I just had a lot of fun playing with it again and kind of rediscovering this palette. I think I'm going to keep it out for a while and use it a few more times at least. I also have another video that I did very similar to this one where I talked about new makeup releases and what I would be using from my collection instead. I didn't actually try anything on but I just compared newer products to older ones so if that sounds interesting to you I'll go ahead and put it right up here on the screen for you to check out next if you have some time and I want to thank you guys so much for spending part of your day here with me. I always appreciate it so much. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Take care guys. Bye.